Maybe we need an intro slogan, like a yeah. Uh, how do you say? Yeah. Exactly. Can you fit in there? Yeah. With that big quarantine bud. <laughs> yeah. Hey guys. Hello. Welcome. 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 Thanks for joining us. Maybe have you switch. switch yeah, your switch phone. your screen. Um, we found that most people wanted wanted um, a horizontal view, so that's what we're doing today. Um, shoot me a message in the comments if if something is not working or we if you can't hear me. Um, but hopefully it's all working and we can get started and get into some coaching. Um, how is everyone today? Tell me how you are, tell me where you are, tell me what's up, are you able to get on the water? How's it going? Cool, great. We see lots of people tuning in. That's great. It's a beautiful Sunday here in Maui. Um, yeah, Sunday, Maui, sunny. Um, we've had some good sailing. We've been doing some coaching with Paul. Paul landed his first Starboard Tech back loop and his first aerial, which he's pretty stoked on. Rightfully so. <laughs> Rightfully so. Um, did, yeah. you, did you receive my message yesterday? Yeah, I did. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Both on your sail, so that means a lot for a sailor. <laughs> I want just to make clear. Yeah, cool. I'm stoked. It's, it's always such a good feeling to learn a new move or to do something for the first time, whether it's a forward loop or a back loop or a spock or a Vulcan or a jibe. Um, I, I remember a lot of those first, those first moments, you know, the first back loop, the first 360, and they stay with you forever, that, that moment, that feeling, that exhilaration of, of getting the landing, having all the pieces come together, you know, you've been working on this thing for so long, you've had all these different crashes and bails, and you know, every, every attempt you get a little bit closer, maybe you learn something new, but then you go like back two, forward, two steps, back one step, and then Finally, there's that moment where it just all clicks, it all comes together, and it's this, kind of magic. This moment is quite funny, because I remember well like, when I was uh, learning the flacker, mm -hmm. and it was like, it was a horrible experience, like over a year was trying them and trying them and trying, and it's really, the, as you said, like building like the little steps towards your goal, yeah. right? like you're just going, and then they're, oh yeah, I'm a centimeter closer, but you crash so hard a hundred times mm -hmm. and especially like with flak and that was the same feeling yesterday mm -hmm. with the aerial it's like when you made it so when mm -hmm. you got it it's like yeah okay that's it yeah. so easy like with flak is like okay you're around now and it's like the yeah. best feeling ever but you're building like this iceberg underwater you know right like right huge giant thing of experience crashes knowledge and then you see just like the little top and it's yeah. like a little spin so i remember sorry i remember when i was telling that to my girlfriend I was, look that is what i made yeah and then she said okay it's not really spectacular <laughs> I said, oh it is it is <laughs> it's, yeah it's that's a great i remember the flaca as well that was a hard move to learn because i think a lot of moves in windsurfing the trick is being able to do two opposite motions at the same time so we were both pushing and pulling at the same time or leaning forward and back at the same time, which sounds counterintuitive, but um, a lot of moves are like that. And the flocka is really like that, where you're, where you're really like driving this way, leaning forward, but you're also coming around. I don't know, it's, it's some, some kind of combination of these like, opposite forces. Um, and there's a lot of that in windsurfing actually. It's, it's kind of being able to do these two different things at the same time that feel like opposites, but they're not actually. Uh, and actually that experience helped me with an interview um, I had like seven years ago, eight years ago, like in a big company where I work for a nutrition company. Uh -huh. um, and they asked me like the final question, so it was kind of why we should hire you? And I said, you know, I'm a windsurfer, so <laughs> I crash a hundred times, but I stand up a hundred and one times. So there's nothing what can beat me, you know. Uh, like I'm always, I'm always, I'm, I'm, I'm always like just go for it. Like this. Yeah, I think I think that's 
something I love about windsurfing as well is that we've all gone through that struggle. You know, windsurfing is so hard to learn, uh, but we've all gone through that. We've all gone through learning to water start, learning to jive, you know, from your pulling the sail up, appalling in the beginning and falling over and falling over and maybe it lands on your head and it's really hard to learn windsurfing uh, but we we all share this experience you know we've all persevered through that and a lot of people don't you know a lot of people try at the schools windsurfing schools around the world are always busy uh, but there's not a lot of people that come out of those schools and get into windsurfing and that creates a nice a nice community in the sport where we know that we've all gone gone through this we've all stuck with it and and we're all committed um, all right uh, let's get into the coaching so we had a lot of good videos and photos sent in for a review um, the number one way to get better is to look at photos or video of yourself just in general that's the number one way to get better is seeing yourself so I really recommend getting um, a camera. You can get a GoPro or one of the you know, GoPro light cameras. The tons of different brands make them. Film yourself. Uh, you can get a, a mass mount, like a fly mount or a boom mount, um, something coming off of the harness. Film yourself so you can see what you're doing. And even without my input or anyone else's input, you'll be able to see you'll be able to match the feeling, the mental side, to what it looks like. And that's so important for getting better uh, in the sport. And it, I think that's just simply the most important thing that anyone can do if they wanna get better, is to get footage of themselves. So it's either getting that POV footage from a GoPro or another camera like that of yourself, and of an angle where you can see your hands and feet is good. So like on the mast or like a harness mount or get someone to film you. And it doesn't have to be super good quality footage. You know, it can be with an iPhone or, you know, something on the beach, but just so that you get an idea of what you're doing. And it just helps your brain match the feeling to the form. And it's, it's really important. Um, all the pro guys, use footage to, to get better, and it's something that, that everyone can do. It's, it's really the, the best way to improve. One thing, like one technical thing is, like maybe you can see it like um, on the bottom of your screen, maybe when, you, when your phone is like uh, horizontal, like on the right side, there's, there's a sign with a question mark. So if you have a question, just hit that button, like, Oh, this is good. Yeah, this makes it easier for us right. to see everyone's questions. So here is that little button with a question mark on it, like a little sign. Press on it and then type in your question if you have a question. So, and it's easier for us to... Yeah, that's a really good point because then it's easier for us to see the questions because sometimes they get lost in the comments. Um, so here we go. We've got a question. All right. You can test it. Like, yeah, you can say, just say hi. Hi. Perfect. Huckle hammer. We see that. All right, so film yourself. Find a way to get films. It's the number one way to improve. And then, of course, I'm here every weekend, so you can send me the footage and we can go through it uh, in these coaching sessions, which hopefully then helps. Um, with coaching, sometimes it can be difficult to use the advice and to use it to get better. I think a lot of people know what they're doing wrong but they have a difficult time implementing that change so coaching is not just about explaining it's about explaining in a way that then it's, it can be executed and this is something that i'm learning because this is my first time really getting into coaching um and and trying to help people improve and this is the first thing that i notice is this it's really not about explaining um, so like when Paul and I were working on the on the on the aerials it's not about just saying what to do because that's still some steps away from actually applying it on the water um, and so what that means for you at home or when you're on the water is okay when you when you're hearing all of these tips 
you got to know how to implement them. And so I think one bit of advice I have is to focus on one thing at a time. So if you're working on your forward loops and you know that you need to reach back, you know that you need to look back, you know that you want your body tight, you want to be doing all these things, just focus on one of those aspects to really concentrate on. So really looking back with the head and do that 10 times and then focus on the next one, you know, moving the hand back and then do that 10 times. Because sometimes if you're trying to do it all at the same time, it's overwhelming and you're not actually learning or trying new things because you've got too much in your head and you can't focus on single aspects that can be executed. And so I think, I think that's really important. When we're going through all these tips, and, and I'll, I'll talk about a lot of different aspects of a move, it's important for you to focus on one or two of those, and then when you're on the water, that's all you're focusing on, whether it's your head, or somehow where you're putting your body, rather than getting overwhelmed with the whole explanation of how to do something. And there are always like a lot of bad habits, you know, like, like um, yeah, we all have bad habits, we all plateau, and so you've got to work on breaking those habits, and that is a different process for everyone. I can share some tips that work for me. So I think if you make a small change, it can help you get out of those habits. So put a helmet on if you don't normally wear a helmet. Um, wear earplugs, you know, and that, that change, that difference, the ocean will sound different, the wind will sound different, everything will be different. And that can be enough of a change to get you out of your bad habit. Um, or move your boom, move your boom up or down this much and then the rig will feel completely different. You'll feel like, like you're on a whole new yeah. sail, a whole new board, everything will feel really different. And that will kind of break your comfort, it will break your, your plateau. So if you're trying the same thing over and over and over again and you're not improving or you're not executing what you know you want to be doing, change something right. and, and that will help break the habit, help get you back, back into more of a learning state of mind. Um, another, another way to do this, uh, which is also something I recommend for people is have a day or an hour in your day on the water where you really focus on doing something completely different. So, if you're normally going out and you're doing forwards and back loops on the way out and you're riding waves on the way in, try to ride all the waves clue first. I think clue first riding is a really good tool to feel something different. You learn a little bit more about the board and the sail dynamics and wave timing. And it, again, it breaks your mind out of its habits. So then you're, you're experience, experiencing something really new. Um, maybe instead of going for the forwards and back loops, you're going for Vulcans and tabletops or one hand jumps or no hand jumps. Something, the, the point is just play with it, experiment with it for that hour where you're doing stuff that is borderline silly even, you know, maybe trying body drags and spocks or uh, whatever it is. The point is to break from your routine. That's a good point, yeah, um, I like that. I notice like I have this problem a lot in Pozo, for example, uh, when I go there to train uh, for the world tour in the summer, it's really like a skate park, the, the place. It's so consistent. You've got, you know, these waves on the bunker and you come in and there's like, just like a little loop that you do there, like racing out for a jump, coming in on a wave. And it's so easy to get stuck. All right, I'm looking for my back loop on the way out. Then I'm looking for my backside 360 section on the way in. And you get kind of stuck in this routine Whereas if you're looking at it from a different angle, there's a lot of places on the wave to, to put in a turn or a trick or different places to jump. And so often I find like that my first few days there, I'm sailing better, like my first three days, I'm sailing better than my next three days there, which doesn't really make sense because I'm, you know, I should be sailing better on the sixth day than the third day, but it has to do with the habits and the routine. So it's really important to break out of routine, break out of your habits on the water. Yeah. Really, really important. And that's also like one thing uh, I realize, that I, I'm, I'm realizing more and more and more is um, to, to 
and you you tell me that now with, with when we go through through my through through my video footage. It's mm -hmm. like, hey Paul, I want to see you making making just a turn, not an area mm -hmm. and stuff like this. So it's a lot of like reading the waves, like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in that speed you have, you know, like in that in that, in that kind of rush you are, and. Um, and, and, and reading what the wave is really offering you. Mm -hmm. Is it a section for, for Cafe? Is it a section mm -hmm. for, for, for 360? Mm -hmm. Is it a section for an area mm -hmm. or not? Cause, and I think that makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, instead of like just going in on every wave mm -hmm. just for an area, mm -hmm. a br break a session down, you know, like, is there a section for a turn? Do a turn. And I think maybe at the end you make like five turns, five areas, and five 360s instead of trying 15 360s and maybe made one mm -hmm. you know what i mean like, mm -hmm. yeah <clears throat> or done one so. i think i think that i think that makes a lot of sense uh which also leads me into i think a, a few fundamentals in wave sailing are really important to go over and always keep in your head one is that wave sailing is all about wave selection and timing the combination of these things and i put them together in the same category because they are related. You can be on a great wave, but if you're in the wrong spot, it doesn't really matter. And you can also be on not so great a wave, but if you're in the right spot and really have the right timing, then you can ride it well. But ideally you're on a good wave and you have good timing. Um, so really pay attention to what waves you're on. You don't wanna just go out and turn around on something just because it's a wave. You know, often when I'm sailing out of Hokipo or anywhere actually, I'll spend maybe five, maybe 10 minutes looking for the right wave on the outside before I come in again. So you don't have to just go out and turn around on the first wave that you see. You really wanna make sure that you're on a good wave. And that means something different for every spot and every day. Um, you know, sometimes it's the bigger wave, sometimes it's not. <laughs> but you want something that gives you a lot of opportunity. So you want something that's clean, um, that has some length to it. And that can be really hard at first to identify what waves are good and what waves aren't. But if, you, if you're paying attention to it and you're thinking, okay, I really need to find a good wave, you'll start to learn, you'll start to see what, what waves are good and what waves are not. Um, but it, it starts from that intention. So it starts from really being aware, not coming in on the piece of chop that happens to be a wave. You know, it's looking for something that has size, that has potential. Um, and like one, it's like one, one way to look at this is like, okay, if you come in on the small wave that offers you the possibility for one turn, compare that to the wave that offers you the possibility of three turns you know, you're getting three times the amount of riding um, for the, like, the same, you know, like the same effort of coming in on a wave. Right. So you, you want to, you really want to try and get the best, the best waves um, that you can um, and really pay attention to the timing. So one thing that I see a lot of people do incorrectly is that they come down to the bottom of the wave and then they start the turn. You want to think about starting your turn, your bottom turn, before you get to the bottom of the wave. So that by the time you're on the bottom of the wave, you're already turning, you're already engaging your rail. And that will really help you keep your speed. Uh, and speed is, is really important in wave riding. It's everything in wave riding. So start Think about starting a turn before you get to the bottom of the wave, and that will, that will really help. Um, and then the other kind of fundamental wave riding thing uh, that I see that I think will help most people is to think of a spring. So if you're thinking of a spring, right, that you press on it and then it bounces back up. So you, your body is like a spring when you're, when you're doing your turn. So wait, when you're coming for your cutback, you want to wind up, so you're kind of you, you put your shoulders and your hips in the opposite direction of the cutback, so that when you get to the top of the wave, you can unwind and use that power of the unwinding body to turn the board and have a more dynamic turn. So if 
if you're coming up to the cutback and you're already faced in into the direction the cutback will go, you don't have a lot of power, you don't have a lot of force to unload into the turn. So you really want to think about winding up. Um, and this concept applies not just in cutbacks, it's, it's really applicable in a lot of wave sailing, uh, which we'll get, get to it as we discuss other moves today and in other weekends to come. Uh, but it's, it's something to keep in your head, to think of being like a spring. So if you want to go that way, wind up this way first, right? So you come here, wind up there. And um, this, if, having that concept in your head will really help with a lot of, with a lot of, of yeah. different aspects of wave sailing. It also helps you on tacks. Yeah, it helps on tacks. It really helps with everything. Right. So, that like Richard van Veen makes a good point. I mean, I think it's super obvious, mm -hmm. but um, like, I mean, he said like, wave stopping brought me inside and wave selection predict waves. And I think what we can learn from this is like, go surfing whenever you have the opportunities to surf. It doesn't matter if you go on a surf, on a sub, yeah. on a kite, on a... Um, go surfing, go surfing. supping. That's, that's or a great even advice. Or the body. Even yeah, the go body. body surfing, go swimming, but get, get aware of what the waves are doing. And surfing can really help that. Surfing, supping really helps. So that's, that's a great tip yeah. from Richard. I think we've got some more questions yeah. coming in. Paul will check the questions. Yeah, so, okay, I will read them, okay? Yeah, all right, read the questions out. Okay, Huckle Hammer was asking, 12 minutes ago already. Sorry, Huckle Hammer, I still, hope you're still up. Here, hi, how do I start with a jump of a swell? Would like to start with tricks, but hopefully with basic jumps. Any advice? Yeah, so for a basic jump, I think you want to be going quick. So speed is, is really important um, in everything in windsurfing, but especially with, with jumping. And you want to find the right, the right ramp. And so if, you, if you're just starting out jumping, you don't want to have a huge wave that you're jumping off of. But you also don't want something too tiny because then you're not going to be able to get airborne. So you want to find something that, that has a bit of slope. It doesn't, you don't want something too steep because that's kind of scary in the beginning with something like this. Hit it with, with speed. And then you can think about kind of scooping the board up the face and into the air. And it's, especially when you're doing chop hops in the beginning, it's really similar to an ollie in skateboarding. So if this is your back foot and this is your front foot, you're kind of pushing down with your back foot as you're going up the ramp, as you're kind of pushing forward with your front foot. So your front foot is like pushing sideways, like kind of laterally, like towards the nose of the board, and your back foot is pushing down as you're coming up the wave. And then once you get airborne, then you can tuck, tuck the back leg up under you. And that will help get the board in the air. So it's, it's kind of like a skateboard ollie. So you're, again, pushing towards the nose of the board with your front foot, you're pushing down with your back foot as you're coming up the wave, and then you lift, lift your back foot up once you're, once you're in the air. And with the sail, I mean, in, these, in the early stage when you're just starting to jump, you can, you can kind of just keep the sail sheeted in. Um, you can do a little bit of like pushing it up forward, uh, but you don't want to have too many things in your head. Find the right ramp, have the speed, and then do that with your feet while you, while you kind of keep the sail sheeted in. And, and that will start getting you airborne, start getting you in the air, and then you can go from there. All right. I would say, I would just add a little thing, which is looking over your shoulder and uh, focusing on your landing when you're in the air. Like. Yeah, you can look where you're landing. I mean, the thing, I think as you start jumping, there's then gonna be a lot of questions that come out of it because in the beginning it's just about getting in the air and then after that it's about getting higher it's about landing better it's all all of these things and and those would be individual questions so try that out start getting some air and then come back with more questions and, and we'll go through them cool so next question really quick is uh from santiago lurashi do you think it is possible to go bigger with front grip under boom for jumping. Thank you. So yeah, so he's quite asking whether 
to jump like this. Um, you definitely can jump with the underhand front grip. In fact, I used to do, when I was like a teenager, I would do my back loops. I know this was pretty weird, but I would do my back loops with an under grip and then I would do push loops with an over grip. And then, I don't know, at some point I just stopped doing the under grip. I think with the under grip, you can go high for sure. You can go just as high and you can do back loops, but maybe you have less control in other jumps like forwards and push loops. And so in general, I recommend sticking with an overhand grip for everything because then that gets you in the right habit. It gets you in the right, it gets you used to, used to riding like this, which is the way that you're going to have the most control and the most variety of, of tricks. But that said, if you really like jumping underhand, there's no problem with it. You know, and a lot of, a lot of the great jumpers from the earlier days of the sport in the 80s and the 90s were jumping underhand. You know, a lot of the Robbie Nash footage, he's jumping underhand. Um, there's some, you know, Bjorn, Vidar, um, Vidar Jensen footage of them jump, jumping underhand. So it used to be a lot more common. Nowadays, you don't see it from the pro guys, but that doesn't mean that it's it's not an option. I recommend if, you, if you're really trying to do a variety of jumps to just get comfortable going overhand. But if you just want to go high and you just want to do back loops, yeah, go underhand. There's nothing wrong with it. I don't think, I mean, the truth about because the question was also like, can you go bigger? Can you go bigger? Oh, the question is, can you go bigger with the underhand grip? I don't know. I think it's, I don't think so. I think it's probably similar. I think it depends on the person. If you're more comfortable going underhand, then you personally can go bigger. But I think some of the biggest jumps that I've ever seen in real life are with an overhand grip. Um, all right, we've got a few more questions. Got some back loop questions. So we're gonna get into back loops more specifically with the footage that was sent in. So stick around and we'll talk about back loops um, in more detail in just a, just a few moments. Um, we're getting a question about the best beach to learn, wave riding on Maui. I'd say either Kanaha or Sprex. Both of those are great for learning. So once this is all done with quarantines and everything else and you want to come out to Maui and learn to windsurf, it's Kanaha or Sprex. Um, Tristan is saying that he thinks that underhand grip is more dangerous for crashes. That might be true. I'm not sure. If you don't have as much control, then it can lead to more dangerous situations. That's definitely a possibility. Um, and I think overhand grip does give you more control. So underhand gives you more power. You know, you can like kind of really pull like this, but overhand gives you gives you more of a fine fine tuned feeling. I also think like for landing, it's like because when you land you, and you have the overhand grip, like the normal grip, you land like this. And so when you have the underhand grip, it's easier to. Yeah, maybe. I. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, and jump. It's it's one of those things where. You used to see a lot of guys doing underhand grip and you don't anymore. So I don't know if that speaks to, you know, it's, it's effectiveness or it's just a trend. Um, but like I said in the beginning, if, if you really want to do a variety of jumps, I recommend staying overhand. If you just want to do high jumps and back loops, I think underhand is fine. Um, you even see old pictures of people wave riding underhand, which I don't recommend because I think you don't have the right power transfer, um, but you know, the, there are pictures of the old pros, Robbie Nash, doing underhand bottom turns. Um, <laughs> um, Traversa Thomas is saying it's a, a nature versus culture debate, which it's funny. Um, all right, do we have any more? Let's just check if we have more questions, and then, oops. <laughs> That's a beautiful view. How do I get? How do I get back? I think it touched the leg with your oh. other thing. You can see that. Yeah. All right, perfect. Okay, more questions. So, landing was first. Do you think it's possible? Thank you, Graham. No, I think that's that's it. All right. We've so all the questions. I think we've covered all the questions that were sent in, so we can get going to talk about. Yeah. 
So you, um, can, you can hear, I think maybe you can see it here. There is a symbol with a question mark and then mm -hmm. you can answer, uh, you can ask us questions and you answer it. Yeah, so if you've got questions, write them in there. Um, in talking about harness line length, we'll discuss that. Well, I guess we can talk about this in more detail, but for now I'll just say you basically want the length to be from about here to here. That's like a good general rule of thumb is you want your, your harness line to be that length. Um, I use mine a little bit shorter because I like to have my harness really loose. So my harness is coming away from my body. So that distance is, is maybe 30, 30 inches, but, um, or not 30 inches, but it would, 30 inch lines would, or fit in that space. Um, but I use 28 because I want to have, I want to have my harness really loose. I have 30 and Thomas, what is your length? Yeah, what are you riding, Thomas? Are you, are you one of these guys that's riding 36s? Or 22? <laughs> All right. Um, I would say that's going to... So Thomas is also on 30. So I'd say like most, for most people, 30 is... Oh, hold on. I'd say for most people, 30 is a good length. So between... Anything between, say, I'd say, 28 and 34 is good for the majority of people. So Thomas, who is, I don't know how tall you are, Thomas. You're taller than I am. Um, and he's using either 30s or 28s. I'm using 28s, so I've experimented a lot. So I've spent like months on 30s and months on 28s and back and forth. And I, for me, I found that I prefer the 28 with a loose harness. Um, so I think you have to experiment it with it a bit. So everyone is saying 30, 32, 32. I think that's right. I think that that's the range that most, most people should be in. I think you want to be careful. You definitely don't want to go too short because then you're, you're stuck to your equipment and you don't have a lot of control. But you also don't want to go too long because then you don't have as much control. You know, the sail's just kind of sitting then in front of you and which can be great for cruising where you're kind of just like chilling it's maybe easier but it in terms of like being more reactive i like to be standing a bit more upright and because if you have really long lines you're kind of like sitting back and i'd like to be a bit more upright which then i feel like i'm in a position to really move so if, if i want to go into a turn right away I can or if I want to go into something else I'm, I'm in a more active starting position with a little bit shorter lines um, so but I think anywhere in that range is is appropriate so anywhere like 28 to 32 28 to 34 but it, it depends on on your personal preference um, but I think I think 22s are too short 24s are too short 36s are too long for most people Come on, Tocino. Um, that, a good, that, that is a good question. And actually, that is what we are doing, but we are also doing like a Q&A so that everyone can ask questions. Yeah, so thank you for joining us. Come uh, on, Tocino. I don't know if I'm saying that right. But yeah, so every, every weekend we're doing this coaching. So we start with, with questions and answers like this, with some general stuff, and then we get into the clips. And so send me clips. This is, uh, I think, the most effective way for you to learn, and then other people can learn from your clips. So if you, I've got a bunch of clips that were sent in that we'll go over, and um, so that's great advice for all these people who have sent in clips, but everyone uh, who's watching can also learn from it. So send me your clips. Um, well, that's a good, good, um, good hook. Let's, I think we should jump into... Yeah, so let's, let's go into, let's go into the, the clip. So I'm trying... So Every weekend we're trying a different way of, of what the best um, what the best format is <coughs> for doing you. this. Um, so I was thinking we switch yeah, switch yeah. the view. Okay. Like this. Yeah. Okay, so I can hold it. You wanna hold it? Yeah, I hold it and Okay, so we're gonna go through some of the clips that were sent in. So, <laughs> Through Graham's taxes and... <laughs> yeah. I hope that's not there. Um, all right. So let's... <laughs> we need some advice here. Start with... Let's just start it at the... 
at the top. So we've got a wave writing clip from Christoph. So this is from Tenerife that he sent in. Um, so this is a, a sequence. And so his question was about how to get a more dynamic top turn. Um, and so he sent in those two sequences. So you can see it here. So my first, my first point, and, and this goes back to what I was saying in the beginning, is that it's all about, wave writing is all about wave selection and timing. So in this, on this wave, there's not a lot of opportunity at this moment actually to do a cutback. So it doesn't really matter what Christoph is doing here, there's not a lot of potential to do a dynamic turn because the wave is not pushing back at him. Uh, so uh, what you're doing in a cutback is you're, is you're get setting up, you, the bottom turn sets you up so that you're facing against the wave and you're pushing against the wave and, and the power of the wave is bringing you back around. And if the wave doesn't have a lot of power, it doesn't have any power, it's not gonna be able to do that. So in this situation, it's, it's just kind of unfortunate that this wave is, is not really providing that opportunity, um, which, which I think is really important to remember is that the wave has to provide the opportunity. You have to be on the right wave. You have to be in the right place. So like in this wave on this place, there's, there isn't really the opportunity to do a dynamic turn. Um, and I think it's a difficult day here in Tenerife. Christoph was saying that it was light wind and small waves, difficult conditions. And that can be frustrating, um, but then it's even more important on these days to really be selective and choose the right waves. And when you're on a wave like this, maybe it's better to try to just ride the white water. So like in this situation, like this wave is really not offering a lot of, a lot of power in this moment. Um, and so, I think the best approach is to go a lot later in the turn and try and hit it when it's breaking or once it's already broken because these waves are so small and they don't have a lot of power anyway um, that there's no risk in, in hitting it too late. Um, so this this next wave from Christoph is a good good example of that where he's coming he's coming pretty late and comes up into the white water. And turn. So, how do we make how do we make this turn more dynamic? So, when you're thinking about wave riding, it's all about using the force of the wave with the board, right? So, what you can see here is that Christoph is kind of turning the board himself. He's he's steering the board around. And ideally you want the wave to be doing that work for you. And that's that's what makes a nice cutback. And so you're just setting it up in a body position that then allows the wave to do the turn for you. So he's coming through with the bottom turn. He's getting his knees bent. That's all really good. He's got spray coming off the board. That's also really good. Um, I think he could try lowering his boom a little bit. Um, that might help, especially in these conditions where you're where you're trying to force turns on on suboptimal waves. So by lowering um, his boom about five cm, uh, which is a lot, you you'll really feel that difference. Um, I think I think that'll help with the turn. And then, um, so he comes up, and then I think it's really important to think about just placing the bottom of the board against the white water. So instead of pivoting on the white water, pla placing the bottom of the board just so that the underside is getting hit by the white water, and then the water and the wave will push you back around. So you can see that the wave is hitting the board kind of over the rail, and so, Instead, what he needs to focus on is just getting the board turned over this way so that the bottom of the board is hitting the whitewater and then that will, will carry him and project him and give him all the speed that he needs to do a good 
turn. Um, and so the way to do that is to be on the heels, to get low on the knees, and kind of hang off the boom. Um, so if you're, if you're hanging down from the boom, it can help you. So you're getting low, getting on your heels, and kind of hanging from the boom as if you're doing a, a pull-up or something. And that can help get your weight back so that the bottom of the board is facing the whitewater to help do that turn. So what is something that you can just focus on is just the angle that the board is to the whitewater. Um, and it, that, that will really help loads. And that's so much of what wave riding is about is, is getting these angles right, getting this timing right. All right, let's move on to Constantino. So this is a clip from Chile, a uh, wave riding clip. So we'll watch it full speed and then we'll go through it frame by frame. Okay, beautiful conditions. Beautiful conditions in Chile. Um, so it's windy, good sized wave. This is a difficult, difficult wave to ride. So again, a lot of it comes back to wave selection. And in a competition in the World Cup, you know, heats are decided on wave selection. Wave selection is so important. Being on the right wave is so important. It's it's not just something for the pro guys either. It's it's for everyone. It's wave selection is I want to say it's everything about wave riding, but it's it's more like it's it's just the foundation. So you you have to have that. So if you don't have have the wave selection, you're so limited in what you're able to do. So the problem with this wave is that there's no there's no section here, there's no force here. And so he's going into the braking section. So he's relying on all his wind speed. He doesn't have any power from the wave to push him. He's using the wind to get the speed into the into this section, right? Because none of this is providing speed because it, it hasn't broken yet. So he's coming into the section with power, but he doesn't have any power except for the power from the wind. And that's a problem because when you're using power from the wind, you're in a different body position than when you're using power from the wave. So it can be really difficult to get a dynamic turn because your, your weight's more back, you're pulling back on the sail, you're, right? Like this is, is a much, the body is much farther back rather than leaning forward in a bottom turn because, and that's because he's using the power of the wind. It's like he's blasting along slalom sailing um, you know, using the, the power of the wind to shoot down the line instead of using the power of the wave where you're more forward on the board. And again, it's, it's not his fault. He's doing a great job with, with what is provided. It comes down to the wave selection. So it's about choosing waves that give you the opportunity to do something, right? You want to choose waves that give you the most opportunity. And so what that, that can mean is choosing something that has you know, a section here where you start your turn that's giving you speed and then you're, you're turning into a wall or another section that, um, that you're set up for. Um, so then let's, let's critique this. Let's go through this, though. Just, um, just a quick question from Sammy. The sail is sheeted in that way we lose the speed, no? Question mark. Um... Sammy, I'm not really sure what, sh what you mean by that. Can you rephrase that? So when you're bottom turning, you don't want to be losing speed. In fact, ideally, you're accelerating. Um, you lose the power in the sail. You lose because you're coming into the wind, so you lose the, um, a lot of the, the force in the sail. There's a, a feeling where the sail goes neutral. Um, it still has some force in it, but there's, there's not a lot of pull on the sail but you still have a lot of speed. Uh, and that comes through positioning and overshooting the sail. And there's a lot of different elements to why that is happening. Um, so if you have a, a follow-up question, let me know and, uh, and I'll get to it. But all right, so for this, for this cutback, so coming up into the section, so the, the timing I think is really good. This is where you want to be for timing. So you want to be right there in the pocket in the critical part of the wave. Um, what goes wrong? So you see, it's quite a spectacular crash. It looks painful. Did it hurt? I hope not. Um, ooh, ouch, 
Send Ouch. Send me with it. Watch that. Ouch. So why why did he crash there? Right? Why did Constantino crash? And there's a lot of different different things going on in, in every wave ride, so I can't give you one definitive answer. But one thing I do I want to point your attention to is his head. So he's looking down the line as he's doing the whole turn, right? But he wants to be going back back this way, right? The cutback is is moving force this way, right? So he needs to be turning his head in the way that he wants to look. And I think one of the reasons he falls is he's got forces going different ways. So the board is trying to go this way, right? You can see the board is on the rail. It's trying to go this way. But his body and head are looking this way. And so having those forces fighting each other, then when he hits, hits the bottom of the wave and hits the transition, he explodes because because they're not they're not all pushing in the same way whereas if his he was looking back this way and turning his body back this way which is the same direction that the board was going i don't think he would have crashed all right we've got another wave from constantino all right this is better wave selection i can tell just from the beginning that this is this is a good wave so this is great wave selection so this is perfect if the other wave was not perfect, this is perfect. See, like, where he's setting up is providing a lot of power and speed, and he's got this nice wall that he can use to generate speed, but then still another section to turn on after the wall. So this is a great example of, of what you want to be riding. You know, you want to have something that's giving you speed and some, a place to go with that speed. So... Just a quick answer, a question from Sammy, because he was reframing it. He said, yeah. I mean, normally you need speed from the wave, not from the sail. If the sail is sheeted in, you lose speed. Yeah, so Sammy, you want to be using using the speed of the wave for sure, Then and that's so you have more speed from the wave than from the wind. Um, in terms of sheeting in the sail, though... Um, I don't know, there's a lot of different variables there. So you, it, sometimes it can be that you're sheeted in and generating speed, or you can be sheeted in and losing speed, or sheeted out and generating speed. I think it really depends on the conditions. It depends whether it's down the line or onshore. It depends on a lot of different factors. So there isn't one definitive thing that I can say, like, oh, when you're sheeting in, then you're, you're losing speed. Uh, it, it really just depends. Um, but you, but like you said, you want to be focused on getting the speed from the wave. Um, all right, so let's go back to this wave ride from, from Constantino. So again, perfect wave selection. This is great. Um, congrats, Constantino. This is great wave selection. I'm proud of you. This is good. Um, looks beautiful. All right, so he starts the turn right at the bottom of the wave. So that's, again, good. He's not coming out too far in front. Great. Um, comes up, does a long... Long bottom turn, comes on the rail. So I think the, the, the placement here is is good. Um, to get a more dynamic turn, there's a few things that Constantino can focus on. Um, he can get a little bit lower in his knees, so like bending the knees just a little bit more and think of turning the knees into the turn, so turning the hips into the turn. And he can also take a wider grip on the boom. So by reaching back on the boom, it will also engage the rail more. Um, another, another thing that I would like to see is trying to do a shorter bottom turn. So here he's bottom turning, he starts the bottom turn here, and he's looking to finish the bottom turn here. I would like to see it at a shorter distance. So that will create a more dynamic turn so it's not so drawn out. And to do that, you know, having the turning the hips into the turn, having the wide grip on the boom are are key. And then also using the head. So 
you know, he's looking way down here, but instead, if he's bottom turning, he can be looking here and, and come up to this point and do a turn and then come down from there and even get another turn before the wave, before the wave finishes breaking. Um, and getting that, that kind of wind up as well, because then that will allow him to come more vertical on the wave. If you're doing a shorter, shorter bottom turn like that, you'll come more vertical will also allow the cutback to be more dynamic. So they go hand in hand. So right now, like I was saying in the beginning about springs, Constantino has his body, shoulders and hips and head kind of already in the direction that he wants to turn when he's starting to turn. And so he doesn't have a lot of um, power to put in the turn. But if the hips and shoulders are turned more this way, you know, more against the direction of the cutback, he'll have more power to put into that turn, which then when he gets on the rail, because he's on the rail really nicely here, he'll be able to stay on the rail a lot longer because he's transferring more power into the turn. Um, and then again, so this is this for this next turn, again, same thing. Instead of looking here, look here. And so you come down, come down from here and try to turn here. And that might feel really radical. So it looks like, feel like you're trying to get to 12 o'clock on the wave, you know, if you're thinking of, uh, of, uh, of a clock, right? You're trying to get, so face your board going right back out. And feeling like you're going right back out is actually more like nine o'clock. It, it's not actually. Um, but see here, he's, he is actually still even going less than nine, I guess nine o'clock is, is maybe the wrong example but the, the point is I mean so here the board is still going you know it never goes back out again it's it's still always pointing down the line which then there's just not a lot of power to push against the board for the cutback because there's, there's two elements to that so one is the body winding up but then two is also getting the wave to push back so the more against the wave the board is pointing then the more the wave will push the board as well into the cutback. Um, all right, let's move on. I think we have a time for one more. Yeah, so let's look at this forward from Magnus. Um, this is a great forward, Magnus. This is, you're looping. This is great. Um, so let's watch that again in real speed. I like this. I like this a lot. So Magnus wants to improve um wants to improve the landing um so he's doing a lot right so like he comes off he's going good angle downwind takes a big grip on the boom throws the sail over pushes the front arm and sheets in so my big tip for this is to start looking back with the head already here so at this point, have your head looking over your shoulder and that will help a lot. That will create a more dynamic loop and also give you more control in the loop and will allow you to sheet in a bit earlier. So the sail could be a bit more sheeted in. So he sheets in hard here, but he could start that hard sheeting in here, whereas the sail is still quite open at this point. So it's a combination of, of looking back earlier with the head. So already as you're just getting in the air, looking back with the head uh, and then sheeting in sooner. And those two actually go hand in hand. So if you're looking back as you're, as you're coming off the wave, it helps you sheet in. And it also helps you get more control in the jump. It helps the rotation be more horizontal. It helps you have more awareness of where you are. So like I've said a few times, when you're, when you're trying these things, go too far. So if, if you're trying the back loops and, you're, and you know you need to go more upwind, go extra upwind just to see where the limit is. So for this, try looking over your shoulder even before you're in the air and see how that feels. And that will give you a lot more confidence and a lot more awareness in the move. Um, and you're doing great loops, 
but if you do those things, then you'll, you'll have a bit more control, you'll have a bit more of a dynamic rotation, and you'll be landing on the board rather than um, on your butt. All right. Do we have... I don't think we've got that much time No, I think we are almost like left. Maybe just um, a minute, and we want to say bye, I think. Yeah, so I think... Let's, um, let's switch this. All right, guys. So thank you for joining us. Um, we're going to do the same thing next week. For the videos that we didn't get to, I'll do a... Um, I'll go through them just on my own, and I'll release that. Um, and then you guys can talk about that, and we can... We can figure out what topics to talk about for next weekend. So again, film yourself, send me the footage. We can go through it next weekend. Um, I'm really liking these sessions. They're guided by you guys. So whatever you want to learn, let me know. Um, and we'll go from there. And it, it seems now to be working on Instagram. But as we, as we get more technical, we might have to move to another platform where it's easier to go through YouTube, Twitch, yeah, whatever. something so where it's easier to go through the footage. Actually, we're thinking um, about to do a Facebook. Yeah, maybe group. Facebook or 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 Twitch or YouTube. I want to get a Facebook group group going where we can discuss some of these things um, throughout the week as well. I think that would be really productive. Make a thumb up if you would like to have a Facebook group. Okay. Yeah, if you want a Facebook group, thumbs up. Give us a thumbs up. Like where Graham can like. Do we have a discuss and we'll get some questions coming in. Yeah, some of fun. And let us know if, if the session was helpful for you, like all the tips Graham shared with you. Yeah, let us know. Give us, send us your feedback. It will help us a lot with, with, um, with how these sessions will evolve in the future. Right. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm enjoying this. And a lot of yeah, stay, stay safe, everyone. I will, and we're getting a lot of thumbs up. And as he says. <laughs> We we are getting a lot of thumbs up, so they're too good. We'll do this. We'll do a we'll do a Facebook group. We'll get something going, and we can uh, have some discussion throughout the week, which I which I'm really looking forward to. I like the idea of having a community where we can uh, talk about these things and where you guys can share your tips with each other and you also know, support the, uh, support each other. each other. Maybe you can post the videos, and then we can have that discussion. Um, that would be great throughout the week. I, th I think that could be really useful. And also do some polls there, yeah, like okay, what's the next topic yeah. we should cover, right? Like okay, and then we make like just like yeah. okay, just just go on back loops and stuff yep. like this. Perfect. Whatever you guys are interested in. All right, cool. Well, that all sounds good. Um, I will put more info. <laughs> hoping for Twitch. <laughs> hoping for Twitch. Yeah, I like Twitch. I think Twitch is a good platform. So maybe we'll try Twitch. Maybe we'll stream next simultaneously. Weekend. We'll try something like, soon. On different platforms yeah it's just it's all a, a learning experience I'd like to be able to stream both but I don't know if we have problems then with the audio or I, I don't know we gotta see. see I would say also like from you guys thumbs up for Graham that he's oh, taking take, taking the time for us to uh, explain and make us uh, better wave sailors so I really appreciate oh, it thank you I'm really thankful for it like maybe a little round of applause from uh, you guys no. <laughs> I don't need applause just needs, let me know what <laughs> let me know what um or you, what you want to learn <laughs> and then i'll let you know what's what's coming um for for next week and what what else is is on the docket whether we can get right. on another platform and, and see how that works and we will um, upload that video on yeah on i've been uploading with... as well all the old live streams onto my youtube um so you can check them check them out there uh, if you're curious about if you missed one of these weekends. All right, guys, stay safe see and soon. see you next week. Peace. Whoop, whoop.